Hello children and welcome to the session today. Children, we have learned about many scientific phenomena that take place around us. We have taken the examples of acids and bases. We have done and talked about metals and non-metals, the reactions they take place. All these things are mostly in control of human beings. Today we are going to talk in chapter number 14, natural phenomena. These are the things that happen in nature and they are not in human control. We are going to talk about the concept and types of charges. We are going to talk about the attraction and repulsion of charges, how the charges are detected and measured, how they flow, what is lightning, what are the precautions that should be taken during lightning, the causes and effect of earthquake, Richter scale and protection against earthquakes. Let's begin the chapter by talking about the concept of charge. So, in the chapter of force and pressure, we observed that bits of paper were attracted when a comb was moved above them. Now, what was this attraction? This attraction was actually movement of charges. Now, we have to understand that when the comb was kept separately, when you rubbed it on your hair and you just kept it, there was nothing happening to the charges. These charges moved only when the comb was brought towards the bits of paper. So, these charges are essentially stationary in nature. They do not move. They are known as electrostatic charges. And these charges exert a force which is called electrostatic force. Take a plastic comb and rub it on your dirty hair several times. Bring it near bits of paper. The comb attracts the bits of paper because the plastic comb gets electrically charged on rubbing. Take a balloon and rub it on a woolen sweater several times. Place the balloon close to the wall. It sticks to the wall because the balloon gets electrically charged on rubbing against the woolen sweater. Now depending on the charge, this can be a force of attraction or a force of repulsion. Children, Benjamin Franklin was the first person who classified charges as negative and positive. Now, let us understand with an example here how these charges actually build up. So, this as you can see is the picture of an atom. Now, what is an atom? We know that atom is the tiniest particle that makes up all life. Now, in this atom, what do you see? You see here that there is a center. This center is known as nucleus. Nucleus has got two kinds of particles inside it. So, protons are positively charged particles. Now, outside the nucleus, as you can see, there are many orbits. In these orbits, there are electrons. Electrons. electrons are negatively charged particles. Children, in a neutral atom, in a neutral atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. Now, if the number of electrons becomes more, which charge will become more? The negative charge will become more. What will be the charge of the atom then? It will become negatively charged. And if the number of protons is more, what is going to be the charge of the atom then? The atom is going to be positively charged. Right? So, in case I am rubbing two objects, one of them is going to lose electrons, then the other one is going to gain those electrons. So, the body that will gain the electrons will become negatively charged and the body that will lose electrons is going to become positively charged. Now, let us understand how we can test these charges. There are certain activities which can be performed to find the nature of the electrical charge on a body. Bring a charged body near another body of the same charge momentarily. 
if there is no attraction or repulsion the other body is electrically neutral bring a positively charged body near another body if the body is repelled the other body is positively charged bring a negatively charged body near another body if the body is repelled the other body is also negatively charged bring a positively charged body near another body if the body is attracted the other body is negatively charged so now we have understood how a body gains or loses charges so this is done by rubbing so rubbing we have taken the example of the comb and bits of paper so many times the example of friction when does friction happen so for example when two clouds in the sky they rub against each other friction takes place because of this friction there is either loss of electrons by one or gain of electrons by one of them the next is conduction so just like if you hold a hot pan in your hand your hand also becomes hot similarly if you hold a charged body you will also become charged so this charging by touch or by conduction then there is charging by induction how does induction work when an uncharged body is brought near a charged body for some time equal but opposite nature of charge is produced on it so you just have to bring the bodies near each other children we just talked about friction between the clouds so there is loss or gain of electrons and in this process a lot of electricity is generated and this electricity comes down on earth as lightning the study of electricity was first conducted by benjamin franklin who used a kite to understand how electricity travels down and that electricity is nothing but a flow of charges let us understand how this lightning happens you must have all witnessed electric sparks in the sky it is called lightning lightning is an electric spark that occurs because of electric charge flowing from one cloud to another cloud or within the same cloud before you learn about lightning it is important to learn about electric charges when two objects are rubbed together against each other both get charged they acquire equal and opposite charge the object that gain electrons becomes negatively charged and the object that loses electrons becomes positively charged charging occurs by rubbing during a thunderstorm the air current moves upwards and the water droplets move downwards a cloud has negative charges concentrated at the base and positive charges concentrated in the upper region when a charged cloud passes over a tall building a tree or the ground the negative charges from the base of the cloud pull the positive charges from the tall building trees or the ground at a very high speed when the positive and negative charges connect it gives rise to an electric discharge in the form of lightning a lightning conductor is installed on top of all tall buildings to protect the building from the effect of lightning a lightning conductor is a long rod of iron or copper that runs from the top to the bottom of the building the lower end of the rod has a metallic plate made of copper which is buried deep into the earth when lightning strikes it the conductor provides a path for the charge to pass through the earth thus protecting the building from being damaged so we now understand how lightning occurs we understand the use of lightning conductors and we have to also understand the precautions in case of lightning when lightning and thunder occur move to a safe place like inside a house or in a car with its windows and doors shut do not take shelter under tall trees or buildings or in elevated place you can take shelter under short trees as they are less likely to be struck by lightning couch on your knees on the ground and place your hands on your knees with your head between the hands this is a safe position to make you the smallest target to be struck stay away from water bodies as water is a very good conductor of electricity 
if you are in a house do not bathe as water again is a good conductor of electricity avoid using electrical appliances it is safe to unplug electrical appliances use mobile phones instead of landlines as lightning can strike telephone cords and electrical wires children in usa many people get hit by lightning every year so in order to avoid that we must always follow these precautions now let's come to another phenomena that takes place in our environment it is earthquakes so we have been told that the earth is made of many plates under the surface so if you look at this picture you will have a clearer view of what these plates are these plates are known as tectonic plates now what is the earth we have studied in social studies in one of your junior classes that the earth has got a central core which is very very hot and there is this hot flowing magma inside the earth this is very hot it is constantly boiling so children what happens when you cook dal pulses in a pressure cooker once the pressure the steam is built up it is released from the vessel on top now here where is the steam going to go there are many ways an earthquake is one of them so let's once again go to this picture so when the heat built up of magma is too much then what happens is these plates begin to move against each other when these plates move against each other they give rise to a shaking feeling and this shaking and trembling of earth is known as earthquake now the point where the earthquake rises is known as the seismic focus right and the earthquake is measured by a seismograph a seismograph tells us the location of the earthquake and then there is the intensity of earthquake how strong is the earthquake that is given by the richter scale richter scale is named after the person who invented it now we have also understood the causes of earthquake we have talked about richter scale now let's understand what are the precautions and what are the devastations that occur due to an earthquake earthquakes can cause a lot of damage man made structures like buildings bridges railway lines dams etc get damaged people get trapped inside buildings factories etc and can die sparking from electrical short circuits result in fires landslides occur due to tremors in hilly areas resulting in life and property communication systems are adversely affected due to collapse of electrical poles tv towers etc under sea earthquakes are called tsunami they also cause a lot of damage to life and property buildings and houses can be made earthquake proof in earthquake prone areas keep the roofs as high as possible cupboards and shelves should be built in the walls so that they do not fall easily hanged wall clocks photo frames etc in proper and safe places so that they do not fall on people if an earthquake occurs fire fighting equipment should be fitted in tall buildings if you are outdoors when an earthquake occurs move to an open area like a park if you are traveling in a car or bus ask the driver to drive slowly to an open area and park the car keep the vehicles away from bridges flyovers tall buildings etc if you are inside when an earthquake occurs take shelter under a table till the shaking stops if you are in bed put a pillow over your head to protect it stay away from cabinets bookcases etc that can fall turn off the gas and power supply so children in this chapter we have learnt about electrical charges we have learnt about the natural phenomena that occur because of electrical charges that is lightning we have also understood about earthquakes we have also dealt with the precautions that we should be taking in either case so i hope you have understood this chapter very well and are ready to attempt the questions at the back thank you